matter, here we are in one of the few quasi-natural parts of New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a business that's really focused on doing things that I would call more natural, or certainly the word sustainable is one that you use and many of us use to describe your business. Would you, would you basically say it's fair to say that pretty much everything that Novozymes does in some way is related to sustainability? I think the, that's our aspiration, and I think uh, by and large we are, we are there, uh, that everything we do is, is improving sustainability. Uh, actually, one of the things that I, that I think is often getting oversimplified is that a company like, a company of any kind will leave some kind of a footprint. Right. So obviously when, when we do our research, when we do our manufacturing, when people travel to work, uh, they, I mean, inherently do stuff that is, I mean, less sustainable. Sure. So, so you have to look at the balance of things. You have to look at the 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 balance between the inputs, what we are putting into the system, yeah. and then all the positive outputs. Uh, and we make sure, to the best we can, that that balance is always positive. While we sit here in New York and talk about uh, sustainability. Uh, we still have four and a half billion people that are not really invited to the party yet. Yeah, yeah. And they, of course, have an aspiration of, of being invited to the party to become, I mean, they'll become more affluent, and I, I really think they deserve that. They'll also get to consume. I think one of the really large tasks we have as we move on to, towards 2030 is to make sure they do not copy the worst stupidities that we made. Right. So, and, and there is a tendency when, when that, that you just simply copy. When you travel to China, uh, there's a lot of copying of American and European habits. Yeah. And, and some of them are great habits, uh, but there are some of them that we really want to change. We know so little about nature. We sit here in Central Park and we watch trees and turtles and the stuff we can see we know about. But when you think about the diversity of nature, we probably know less than 1% of what's here. Uh, and nature is so incredibly smart. It has had uh, 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 billions of years to develop itself. And it's so incredibly smart about the way it uses resources. Today we actually reach five and a half billion people on a daily basis with our enzyme solutions. Really? Yeah. So this is not just for the rich uh, few in New York and uh, America and Europe. Uh, this is for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of food and beverage products are uh, manufactured where you get quality and consistency and you get a better utilization of, of the raw materials by using these technologies. One thing we were talking about as we were walking over here was this idea that sort of sustainable business was, you know, to use a silly term, uncool until fairly recently. I mean, talk a little bit about how you see the mood shifting in you know, the whole ecosystem of the economy, which involves, of course, Wall Street, mm -hmm. uh, towards companies like yours that really think seriously about sustainability. I'll, I'll tell you my personal story. Yeah. So I, um, I, I'm, I'm trained as a chemical engineer. I'm trained as a scientist. I'm a, a kind of obsessed with technology, uh, maybe even addicted to technology. Okay. Up until, up until 93, 94, and there were actually a couple of discrete events, I honestly believe that the planet could support anything. Hmm. Uh, and I didn't see any boundaries. It wasn't until I started traveling on China, I started realizing the, the massive force of the, particularly Asia, but in general the emerging markets, the population growth and the stress that it was putting on the system, that started to dawn on me in actually at, at, a, at a discrete event in 1994. Hmm. Now the company that Novozymes was a part of then, uh, there, there were smarter people than me, uh, so the company started working on it before that. But, but it was something that came to us, a realization that came in the kind of the mid-90s. Then we, we started working with that and, and we had the belief that, that if you invest in something that is long-term sustainable, then you have a lower risk, you're going to get higher returns. Yeah. Uh, and you that could say then, we have, then we've moved on down that, that track. Uh, initially, I think most people were looking at us with, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
uh, that's fine, but go do your business. Um, and then not until the kind of early, early 2000, did other companies start to take it seriously. And, and then you, you saw the mobilization around UN Global Compact. Uh, a lot of activities come in place of like-minded companies. You still, you still had a large contingency of companies who did not care about it at all. Well, we still do, unfortunately. You still have some of them, but, but much less, uh, luckily, than we had back then. I think the capital markets are, they look at the risk profiling of this, they still do that. They, uh, there are sustainability funds, there are funds that will only invest in sustainable businesses and that's great. But the mass of the capital market today in 2018 is still looking at sustainability as a way of risk mitigation, right. which is not bad at all because it means that the money will travel into things that are less risky and very often those things are actually more sustainable. Right. Uh, so that's why you see some of the uh, as, as, as some some of the major um, funds uh, uh, worldwide are, are moving in the direction of calling out the need for more sustainable behavior uh, in many different aspects of life. Pretty pretty much the 17 SDGs because that is a way of minimizing risk long term. Right. Well, you talk about the, the goals and, and you talk about your own epiphany in the 90s to realize that you know growth could not be unlimited without changing our approach. But I know that you are a, 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 someone who has a lot of optimism about what tech can achieve. Talk more about the, the likelihood that we can achieve the goals by 2030 and, and how you think about technology broadly as a tool to, to achieve that. Well, I'm, I think if you incentivize the right technology development, which is about creating markets and let capital flow into it, then can then technology can do an awful lot. I, I know the areas that we have a certain insight into when it comes to energy efficiency, when it comes to renewable energy, I mean, general in general climate change issues. Yeah. Then um, we actually, when, when you look at the analyst reports that are made, and so it's not something Novozymes is doing, but when you look at these analyst reports, then we probably have about two thirds of the solutions today. Yeah. And we could just, I mean, we could actually go implement it, if not tomorrow, then with a couple of years of investment programs. We you mean for most of the SDGs? Well, at least for those that- For the that, climate change. Uh, now I'm talking about climate change. Yeah. We, could actually, we could actually make it. Um, but but it's, wow. it's, it's so great. slow because that, that transformation that needs to happen um, is, is really slow. I mean, there's, there's a lot more money made from insustainable behavior than there is from sustainable behavior. Right. And I think that's where regulators, governments, uh, cities and, and, uh, and companies uh, uh, get together. That's where they can push it and, yeah. and change things. Uh, but I'm, 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 I think actually the problem is not technology. Hmm. The problem is our, our inability to change fast enough. But yeah. now, you know, here you are a company that has built a lot of its strategy around achieving the global goals and you're somebody who believes in science's potential to do what you just said and to really maybe make a huge difference so that we can essentially save the planet, mm -hmm. to use a cliche. How do you feel about the way other companies are thinking about these issues and how that's shifting? I mean. You're a company that's a little bit ahead of the pack in terms of your priorities here. Do you find other CEOs and leadership teams of other companies are showing more interest in this? Are, you, are they coming to you to ask how you learned, what they can learn from you? Are you talk a, bit, a little <clears throat> bit about the mood of business more broadly. I, I think the, uh, 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 the, the mood, I mean, business leaders are absolutely thinking about this and, and much more today than, than just a year ago. Even than here, yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the 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 need for sustainable solutions to to improve, I mean, to 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 continue improve on your business and to de-risk your business, is something that it, that is apparent to most uh, 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 company leaders and company uh, company boards. Mm. I, I think there, honestly, sometimes I have to ask myself if if I was employed by an oil company, where would what would I do? Yeah, how would I react differently? And I think some somehow you have to um, 
somehow you have to understand that there are companies who are just between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, you might not have gone to work there in the first place. Peter. Maybe <laughs> not, maybe not. I would. But, but, but there's just no way that, that they can continue. They have to transform themselves radically. They have to do something fundamentally different. And, and, yeah. and there are companies in that, I mean, that neck of the woods that are trying to transform themselves. Yeah, there are. But there are also companies, to the best of my understanding at least, that are just galvanizing their approach because they, I mean, they, they're, they're just continuing stubbornly to do what they've always done and that's right. gonna be the right thing to do that you can call that climate change denial you, you have all these things going on at the same time right the issue that we all have is that I mean 2030 is not that far off right um, okay and in, parti in particular in particular when you, when you look at climate change then I think we're in a real hurry yeah and um, uh, right. so while consumer perceptions and, and consumer demands and desires are changing. I actually think we, we need to speak more to this. Yeah. I, I, I would love politicians to speak more to it. Right. I think the media plays a role, but I also right. think companies play a role. I think companies can actually talk more about that and they can lead more than they do today. But and I companies. love the idea that it's really all of our responsibilities yeah, yeah. and I certainly admire what Novozymes is doing and I thank you so much for taking time to talk about it. We've covered a lot of great stuff. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks.